Hello, everyone. Hello, Live TV, and hello, Reagan Ruddy. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know who Reagan Ruddy is, she is the first ever uh, Caymanian Olympic gymnast, and I think that that deserves a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my whole audience is clapping, and you just you can't hear them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I just want to say hi. And where are you right now? Um, I'm currently in Katy, Texas. It's just outside of Houston, Texas. So, yeah. Cool. And so what are you doing there? So this is uh, where um, it all kind of started my um, training in the U.S. So I go to the University of Florida. Um, but the gym I was at, the coach couldn't take me to my competition. So I came back here um, and I've been training back with Johnny and Eddie. Um, we've been we trained for Pan Am Championships for Brazil, and now we're training for Tokyo Olympics. So it's crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. How old are you, Reagan? I mean, I, I think you're young enough that I'm allowed to ask that. <laughs> yeah, I'm 19. <laughs> yeah, right now age is still a good thing. So yes, yes. 19. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so you said you started off at University of Florida, but now you're and you're so are you solely focused on training right now? Or are you still pursuing a degree? So um, when I was 14, I actually started training in the U.S. I left Cayman and everything. Um, I started living with host families in Texas. Uh, I graduated high school in 2020. So I started at the University of Florida. But right now, because of summer and everything, I didn't take summer classes so I could focus on my training. Yeah, what I, I would imagine you're, you're pretty busy with Crazy all busy. of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's fantastic. So... What age did you start with gymnastics? Uh, when I was about four years old, um, my sister was also doing gymnastics. So, you know, being the younger sister, I wanted to do everything she did. So and better. We were at, <laughs> yes. We were actually at Motions Unlimited down on Sparky Drive. And that's where everything started. That's where the... Oh, a shout out to, Mo to Motions where it all started. Yes. <laughs> Your original team. <laughs> yes, literally. Yes. So um, what is it about, I mean, besides the fact that your sister did it, but I mean, that can only take you so so far. <laughs> um, what is it about the gymnastics that you really enjoy? So obviously when you're younger, you're just a burst of energy and the idea of flipping upside down is quite exciting. And I was one of those kids that just loved the adrenaline of learning new skills and seeing, ooh, how, how many times can I do this? Or how many, how high can I jump and all of that? And I just kept trying to see how good I could get. Um, and then obviously, flat, um, flash, flash forward, you know, years later, when you're competing and representing your country, it's the thrill of representing your country and hearing your name over a huge stadium that just keeps you going. And you've done fantastic. I mean, regardless of Olympics, I know I have seen you constant when, when when you go away you definitely always come back with quite a few souvenirs <laughs> that <Yes>. you earned <laughs> thank you yes yes what do you think is something that um is is difficult for you about gymnastics or what kind of pushes you um or challenges you a bit that doesn't come as naturally um well for me physically when in terms of gymnastics I'm very tall for a gymnast. I'm about five oh. seven, five eight, whereas most gymnasts, you know, sometimes are barely five foot. So for me, that can has its advantages and its disadvantages. Um, I'm also not the most flexible, so I've had to oh, work man. a lot on that. But mentally, the biggest part for me was um, realizing that I was away from home and having to just take advantage and fully appreciate the opportunity and knowing that it was hard, but um, knowing that I was in a very um, unique situation and to fully take it for, um, not to take it for granted, just work and make the fully time take advantage of it. worth it. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. It's, it's hard, the homesickness, right? Yes. What very are hard. some things that you found were helpful in terms of coping with that? Gosh, you know, sometimes <laughs> I still wonder <laughs> what makes it easier. Um, so, like I said, I left Cayman and my family when I was about 14 and I started 14, 15 and I was living with um, host families and honestly, literally being in a stranger's home was not the easiest being in a foreign country per se yeah. and having to train super hard. But I knew that 
Um, there were days that I wanted to give up, you know, I was 14, 15, I was still really young. And I'd see my family all together, you know, going fishing. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> fishing I want, I want to go out on the boat, but you know, I've got to wake up for a 8 a.m. practice. Thinking, but I just knew that at the end of the day, I'd regret giving up and not giving it my full potential and cutting it this dream short. And I think myself every day that I didn't let myself quit and give up. You didn't go fishing. You stayed, no, didn't stayed go through. fishing. You stayed the, I'm stayed going the course. Something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Much bigger. <laughs> Yes. You can still Most stand with it. You have to, you can weigh it, have it weighed in when you get back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. And I think, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, you can go both ways when you hear someone hasn't done something, right? Yes. You can either say, oh, well, who am I to do it? Or who am, you know, why would I be the first gymnast for Cayman? Or you can say, I am going to be the first gymnast. And yeah. that was the, the voice you had inside you. Am I correct? You had oh, that in your mind sure. for a while. So, um, I remember watching the 2008 Olympics. I was six. So it's like a blurred memory, but I still have it of, you know, walking out into the living room and I saw Sean Johnson, Team USA on beam. I remember thinking, you know, I could do that. I was like, I could go to the Olympics. And I was yeah, just well so stubborn in this little, you know, six year old mind that, Ever since then, you know, I said, yeah, I can do that. I got that. <laughs> and, you know, I tell kids, you know, what do you want to be when you're older? And I say, you know, I, I want to go to Olympics. I want to be Kim Ann's first Olympic gymnast. And they say, okay, <laughs> dream big, kid. And I was like, you, you watch. So you'll see me yeah. on your TV one day. You know, that stubbornness, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, got me here. I was a dreamer and I just kept dreaming. I know, and they're not talking about just K-Man Life TV. It's a big screen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, you've, no, you've hit it much the bigger. <laughs> yes, this is the big screen. You've hit it big. No, you're you're on international screen, and that's amazing. You know, especially coming from the small place, like mm -hmm. it's not something easy to do. Many countries, especially for gymnastics, have a very fully funded, comprehensive oh, program that. For sure. Yeah, they eat, breathe, sleep all of that and so I mean I don't know what is the right way but I know that you probably had a much different journey than most of the people there mm -hmm. especially um I mean you look at the American team they have Simone Biles they have Suni Lee they have all these big names they have to host the whole Olympic trials just to find you know the four top girls that they're going to take for a team but in reality all of those girls that competed trying to get this Olympic spot could win Olympic gold but they just mm. have so much depth in this country and many other countries that it's just incredible. But then there's countries like Cayman Islands, you know, there's other countries that are small that don't quite have the representation um, at these competitions, but they're still doing the best for their country and there's, they still are the best for their country. And I think it's important for people to realize that and just almost not compare too much, like compare smaller countries to these big, large countries that have, this talent just flowing in because you know mm. at the end of the day we're the best for our country and that's mm -hmm. quite all that matters is that we are making history for our country no matter who we are yeah or no we matter are, where we came from you know we're just doing the best that we can do and um that's still very special for us like to us um and i just don't want people to take that away no definitely not i agree and and you're right i mean the pool is so much bigger when you go to the bigger countries and and you know just everything behind it the training the coaches all all that money i mean you know, unfortunately it does make a big difference but it does not take away for the amazing talent that you, we know you have and you've exhibited you. <laughs> multiple global stages so tokyo or not you're definitely a winner for us no matter what Thank you. So, I really do uh, appreciate that. Yeah. And I think it's awesome because a lot of times I find myself included that, you know, it, putting yourself out there and taking that risk is very scary. Oh, and it's a lot it's easier terrifying. to just stay small. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a lot easier to just stay small and just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. forgotten. But I'm learning that it does nobody any favors to stay small, right? No. Um, it because doesn't. look at you now you you've inspired so many and i know that now all those little girls at motions they have mm -hmm. someone they they don't need simone biles they have reagan ruddy 
you know? Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> and so you'll be on our box of Wheaties here or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, we'll have to get you on the, on some packaging. Maybe we'll, we'll speak to the marshmallows or we'll get you somewhere, Reagan. You'll be the face of something. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but I'm like plantain chips. <laughs> I know I was going with Patty. <laughs> yeah, I know I was going with Patty, but that's I think more Jamaican. So I'm actually yeah, true, true, maybe true. Powder Monkey will Powder Monkey will step in and put you on the <laughs> on the plantain chips or the marshmallows. No pressure, Powder Monkey, if you're listening. But yeah, uh, but yeah, this. yeah, you better. Yeah. Now we've got sponsorship deals. I'll take ten percent. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, regardless, I think. Um, and you have a, a lot, you, you're not there yet, so you still have a long road ahead. What do your days look like right now? So um, I train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Friday, Saturday, 8 to 1.30 every um, on those days. Um, you know, I wake up at 6.50, I eat breakfast, shower, whatever I need to do to get myself going. I listen to music because not the best morning person. Um, then I go train very hard for five and a half hours. And then afterwards, I eat a lot, <laughs> um, everything in sight, and then sleep and do therapy, you know, take care of my body, everything like that. Uh, right now, I do have driving lessons because I got to get used to driving on the other side of the road. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's also my day, but that's just temporary. But yeah. So you said that some you're not the best morning person what is a what song what is a song that really wakes you up or gets you all pumped so um when i was younger i always used to imagine songs um like when i thought of the olympics like i thought of these songs if you know what i mean and mm -hmm. when i found out i was going to the olympics i made a playlist of all of these songs and now i listen to that every morning because got to make myself realize i'm not dreaming that i actually am going to the olympics you're going but um so, yeah, so what's one of those songs? You're gonna have to share that playlist with us, by I the will, way. I will for sure. Yeah. I think the biggest song, and it played at gym yesterday. I started crying again. Because oh my was goodness! Like, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm going. And one of the little girls I looked at was like, and then she started crying because we're very close. But um, it's "Glorious" by Malcolmore. That's one of the biggest. Yeah. Songs. Okay. Because if you just yeah. listen to the lyrics or anything, it's like I did it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. That's glorious. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. yeah. No, but I mean, music is a very powerful thing. I 100% I believe in it. I mean, whenever you're feeling down, if you can, you know, obviously you process your feelings and all that because I, you don't just tuck them away, but it's yeah. always good to, all right, get back up. And, exactly. and, it's, and there are those powerful songs that get you up there and get you into a new frame of mind. I'm yes, sure it takes sure. you back to when, when you were little and just inspires yeah. you. For sure, for so. sure, it definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any message for any of anybody that is either doing something that no one has done, or if they're young and they they would like to compete in an Olympic sport that perhaps has never been um, that no one that has that's not swimming and not gymnastics. You know, <laughs> um, what any advice you have for them? Um. Honestly, just keep dreaming. Don't give up. You know, representing the Cayman Islands is such a amazing, um, indescribable honor and privilege. And the opportunities and memories you'll make, um, they stick with you for a lifetime. It's the best feeling to hear Reagan Ruddy from the Cayman Islands. You know, it it it's a big responsibility, and I love carrying it because you know I am Reagan Ruddy from the Cayman Islands. People know me as that. Um, and it's just amazing. I just want kids to realize the, you know, I keep saying honor and privilege, but <laughs> the honor and privilege you have to be, to come from the Cayman Islands. You know, it's an amazing country and to be able to represent it is just a whole nother level. So if you have the opportunity or you want to create that opportunity and you have the goal and you want to do something no one else has done, I mean, you can do it because there was many points where I thought, you know, this might I don't know if I can quite get there, but I just never stopped, you know, God's will and God's timing. Here I am. And um, just uh, never cut yourself short, you know, never say, oh, just because I'm from Cayman Islands, I can't do that because you can do anything. No, and that, you're touching on a very real issue because a lot of times there is, unfortunately, 
a hidden inferiority among Caymanians. Like it's like you're little, you're from this little place, you're no America, you're no this, you're no that, you know? But you know, right now we're one of the leading countries in terms of battling this pandemic. Exactly. You know? And so it's our unique island way and coming, everyone coming together and everyone, you know, being for the greater good that mm -hmm. allowed us to be in this position. And so yes. we may be small, but we're very mighty. We're powerful. And, uh, yeah, definitely. And so I think it's great that you're touching on that because it's a, it's important. That's one of our hopes for the channel is that it raises our sense of, of national pride uh, yes. and that we're more than just beaches. I mean, we are, I love our yes. beaches and they're, they're, we're they're beautiful. <laughs> we're people, exactly. And we're very diverse people, exactly. It's amazing. Different people, different faces, different colors, but all one came in. Exactly, so, and, you know, I think we're, we have the most supportive country, you know. If I went to a competition and did bad, no one in Cayman would care. Oh, you know, I come no. back and they're still so proud. So I think people need to not take advantage of that, but realize, you know, and it took me a while to realize that, but everyone at home is going to love and support you no matter what. Because, you know, you're, everyone you're out, there. out there and represents the yeah. human islands is making history one day mm -hmm. at a time. And no one's going to hate you for that. You know, it's positive history. Yeah. And we're all just wishing that we had that kind of courage. <laughs> so <laughs> we're just happy that you're out there doing it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. But um, anybody that you want to, you know, give a shout out to or thank or that has been a very powerful part of your journey? Um, definitely, you know, my parents, my family. Um, without their love and support and allowing me to chase my dreams, I wouldn't be here. You know, they allowed me to leave home and everything. You know, they supported that. Um, they funded that and everything. So without them, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. Um, same with my friends. I know <laughs> I left you guys back in Cayman, but, you know, they still talk to me all the time. I can't thank them enough for, you know, still showing me love and support through thick and thin um, and just still cheering for me back home. Um, Commotions Unlimited, you know, that was my home. That's where it all started. So Kelly Paz, Kenzie Rose, Allison, all of them, you know, those, well, especially Kelly Paz, you know, that was my first gymnastics coach, really, so. I can't thank them enough, you know, Sandra Borga, the um, owner, you know, if she hadn't mm -hmm. opened that gym, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. Um, and just the Cayman Islands Olympic Committee, especially for allowing me to, you know, make history for our country every time I leave and compete, you know, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't, have, <laughs> again, I wouldn't be giving this interview right now and the Cayman Islands Gymnastics Federation for supporting and funding and all of that you know it's just incredible the support through thick and thin and everyone from everyone that's awesome and i'm really glad that you're feeling supported especially because i know these olympics are going to be quite different yes. um <laughs> you, you don't get to have uh, as much physical support there and, and not just you alone but but everybody exactly um is is limited in, in how much support th um, they can have there so I'm glad and, and I hope that we'll be a, a voice of support that you can count on us that Thank we're going to be carrying you on. Yes, and, um, and you know that, you know, no matter what, like you said, we're all really proud of the Thank amazing you. accomplishment you've already done. Like, you're good. You're good. Thank so you. everything else is just icing and sprinkles. It was as funny they say. because um, there was a news uh, channel here that was like, no matter what happens, she is an Olympian. And I was like, Oh yeah. my gosh, it's true. You know, I yeah. Mean, no matter <laughs> what, trying to process it. Oh That's why. Goodness. Have you heard about the first Caymanian Olympic gymnast, yes. <laughs> Reagan Ruddy, Cayman yes. Islands? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. So I'm really got. I'm really glad I got this opportunity to get to talk to you, and hopefully, you. Um, Reagan has uh, volunteered to be our our. Uh, Olympic collaborator, so she's going to be sharing different videos kind of behind the scenes of, of mm -hmm. the journey so that other people can be part of it and see what it's like over there behind and the, the behind the scenes or <laughs> the snap snapchatable moments. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I, I dated I myself when I was like roving like, reporter. You're like, what? Roving what? <laughs> I was like, uh, what is that? When what I went to the Canon Championships, I made a Snapchat story. It was like, I said, swipe up if you want, if you want to be on this, and like over hundreds of people swiped up. But it was like that. It was 
you know, in Brazil, whatever. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's so I awesome. got this. <laughs> yes, we, we got, we believe in my, you. That was my uh, dress through dress rehearsal for the big yes, one. Yes, yeah, this is for the big one. Now now you go to K-Man Life TV, you're, you're moving Ooh. on. <laughs> got a label. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, thank you so much and you're thank awesome. You. And I hope I get to know you more and hopefully I actually get to meet you one day when you when you come back from your journey. Thank um, you. I really appreciate you having me. It's been an honor. Yeah. Very yeah, exciting. for sure. And uh, the video that you speak about um, that you, they did, we're actually going to be showing it as well today. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so we'll get to showcase that. And then That's hopefully true. you send us some videos and we'll get yes. to do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, and a day in the life of Reagan Ruddy when you have the moment, because I know you're yeah. very busy. Um, but yeah, so this is not the last interview. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Uh, thank with you. you in our <laughs> yeah. Life TV community. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for, for coming on. I thank know you're you. very busy. And um, and hopefully we can see more of you and you can continue and everything goes very well. Thank um, you, I really appreciate all the love and support. Yes, we're happy to have you. All right, anything you wanna, any final words you wanna say to our listeners or? Um, they, I mean, I'm not too sure who's listening, but yeah. hope you have a good day. Thank you for the love and support, and God bless. And thank you, everyone, for also saying prayers, because I know a lot of people are praying for this. You know, I can't thank God enough. Truly awesome. a blessing. Great. All right, Reagan. So until next time. Thank you. Have a nice rest of your day if you're resting. So yes. Yeah. You are. Okay. Gotta go okay. take a nap. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Have, Have a, a good, good one. one. Bye-bye.